Justin, come down to this mic, dog. I see you pee, man. You on my bad side, cootie, man. Come over here, man. 107.5 WGCI, number one for hip-hop and R&B. You on the B-side with your girl, Tifa, man. I got my man Kanye West in the studio right now. Say what's up to the people, dog. What up? What up? What up, Shot Town? This is Illinois Radio with Biko, Illinois Jones, and Pretty Riot going down right now. Ah, uh, man, y'all already know what time it is. You're tuned in to Illinois Radio, Chicago's most valuable radio show. I'm your host, Biko, alongside Pretty Riot, Illinois Jones, and as always... We bring you guys the illest guests from around the city and globe. globe. And today, Bow. we got the homegirl Tifa in the building. Yeah. Yeah. The welcome is so warm. The energy is so dope. I appreciate y'all. Thank you. Welcome to Illinois welcome. Radio. Welcome. Welcome, welcome Queen. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that, man. The love is real. Going from listening in a, in a car to you to actually having you right here this I ain't gonna lie, I'm a little emotional. Man. That's that's blessings for me too, you know, to know that somebody felt, you know, that work. That was, I won't say it was hard work that went into my show when I was on air because I loved what I did, so it never felt like work. But I definitely invested myself, you know, completely and fully into it because I wanted it to be amazing. So thank you. Ain't no I problem. That. We we definitely gonna talk more about radio too. But let's let's chop it up about inf- infamous syndicate because you know that that was like a big deal yeah. in the '90s. That I feel like you know people around the world know. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And um, you shine a link up like one of the first Chicago rap yeah. duels yeah. in the '90s. Uh, at at the same time, the the album just like changed the atmosphere of things. Yeah, and y'all coming around twenty three years. Yeah, that's album, March eighteenth. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, take us back to that time when uh even before you met Shonda, take us back to the time when music became you know your love. Man, that's you know that's an interesting time because you know when you young, like especially in Chicago, we be dealing with all kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Coming at us. And for me, my getaway, my freedom was through music before it was even my own. You know, I was kicking MC Light in my mirror with my brush. <laughs> Shit. I, <laughs> Joe, I used to have, y'all gonna die laughing at this. I used to have a fucking uh, 12 inch of Ashford and Simpson. Oh, Solid. Sweet. Solid as, as a rock, rock. <laughs> like, oh, it's like shit like that Like really dope music You know It just It just gave me A certain level of freedom And I wasn't scared Scared of things That was going on In my family Or in my community Or in my life You know what I'm saying mm-hmm. um, Once I was vibing to music So Eventually I started to just like Write short poems Just cause that was a thing man You know when you were shorty Especially back then Really wasn't a lot of people Like rapping like that not mm-hmm. around you you saw the shit like on tv yeah. you know but it wasn't like a lot of people around you was like bars they was trying to spit so i started out writing poetry first um and then i started listening to people like queen latifah more and i was like that sounds like that i think i could do that mm. so queen latifah kind of like sparked that flame yeah yeah like around the you know around her other uh, ladies first uh, movement and Moni Love, um, just the way they spit, they were so confident, um, and it was just so positive. It was, even though like when you're young, you know, you have certain insecurities. They talked about how I wanted to feel about myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And mm. I could be that in my raps, and I just kept at it. I started spitting for my mama and family to come out of crib, and you know. And it just it just grew. Um, around the time that me and Shauna met and linked up, it was a tough time for me. Well, we linked up before I had experienced a real trauma in my life. Okay. Um, my boyfriend at the time, who was also my best friend. So it wasn't like, oh, it was just my first boyfriend. No, it was like my best friend for years um, was murdered. Oh, no. Nah, and man. that was tragic for me, you know. Um, and it was also around a time where, you know, you I was kind of at that age where you bump heads with your OG. But me and my mom, are my, like, she's my best friend now. Um, and for most of my life she has been. But that was a tough time. Like, How old were you? Oh, I think I was like 15. Wow. wow. 15, 16 years old. Um, and like I said, we already had a relationship where we would go out with our group of friends and we would just spit right and um when that happened 
we was all at a bowling alley one night and I literally had a fucking breakdown. Like my friends, only my friends close to me will be able to tell you about this. I like I had a breakdown. Like I fucked up the stalls at the bowling alley in Jeffrey Manor. Like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I had to clean that up. My bad. <laughs> Years later, you know. <laughs> you know, but you know, understanding life now, I had a breakdown. You know, um, and the music that we created in that album saved me. Mm. So that's just I've never even told that story. That's crazy. She gonna be like, nigga, you told that nigga. Yeah, I did. How old were you? So you was around fifteen when y'all made that album? I was well, no, I'm saying we were we started we bonded deeper around that time. So he died when I was sixteen, seventeen. Okay. Right? Right. Um when you when you start creating together with somebody, before it gets to the stage of a label, like that's a long period of time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you guys get it when you get it. But the process of putting that vibe together, those uh, concepts, hooks, raps, it takes a long period of time. Like, any artist will tell you your first project is, like, that's the best album because you've worked on it for so long, really all your life. Everything goes into it. But because of what I was going through emotionally, the process of making that music that came out then, it saved me. It's a song on there um, called I Gave You Me. Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of talk about it. I touch on it a little bit, but it was, yeah. That I mean, me. with 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 us talking about the album changing the game. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it released like I said, twenty three, pretty much twenty three years ago. Next week, mm -hmm. uh, it made a huge impact, and also the name Infamous Syndicate. Mm -hmm. Is it? Was there ever any beef between you guys and Mob Deep? It wasn't between us. Them niggas was mad. Like, I mean, and I'll do respect, rest in peace, peace. And, and As I, I, I'm a huge fan. But <laughs> it was, for us, it was just a name that we came up with, right? Um, it wasn't, you know, we weren't thinking about that back then. We was in our own zone, in our own lane. But uh, we did hear about them being upset about our name, and it was just like, okay. <laughs> right, and I hope that I mean, we ever heard y'all side of the story on that, especially yeah. like your side of the story on that, because it's yeah. like with that being like y'all first album together and only album that released, yeah. and then you know it being a big moment for Chicago, and then you yeah. get new, uh, you know, Mob Deep out in New York, and New right, York is a crazy mecca. at that time. Like, and did, we were out there a lot. Did it hurt y'all at all with them kind of like you know um, putting some negativity or dirt on y'all name? You know what? I'm gonna be honest. I've never been a person to feed that type of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just, I've always been a person to attach to the positive shit unless something just really, really stressed me out. And then I might kind of obsess about it and be like, all right, what's the resolution? How do we figure this out? Um, but I don't recall it being such a big deal for me. Uh, at least, maybe I just don't remember like that. That's good. To be honest. This Chicago, she ain't real. She ain't I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and that's the Chicago yep, that's, in us. Yep. Not to. <laughs> that's what they being a Chicago she woman just... entails. It, it is what it is, bro. <laughs> like, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I mean. That's What's going to happen, really? Let's say. Let's just. You can't pull it off the shelves, you know. I'll do respect because we are fans of Mob Deep. We mm -hmm. just killed a Mob Deep beat not too long ago. Mm -hmm. We fans of Mob Deep, but. Every move you make in your life is not going to please everybody. Right. Are you going to do what you feel called to do, or are you going to try to please everybody? That's true. You did, you, did you feel, like, being women in like at that time, did you feel any type of pressure to please people? or Absolutely. How did you, like, overcome that? Like, what made you guys, like, really stick to just, like, y'all individuality and, like, being authentically yourselves and, like, drowning out the noise of the outside pressures? You know, it, it has to So, for me... Because I'm a person that's always focused on growth. So it has to be a balance with that. And I would say with that, me and Shauna like yin and yang. Because I can be the super the person that's like, yo, let's learn this. Or let's try this. And she could be the person like, nigga, this the process. This how we do. <laughs> this works. This we do. You know what I'm saying? In a good way. Yeah. Like both of our perspectives are in a good way. But then it can also flip. Sometimes um, I think it's about knowing who you are. If you know who you are, you know what you should let influence you and what you should be like. Nah, that ain't me. 
what's an opportunity for growth and what's like, yeah, that's some trans shit. Uh, that's not what's happening. Um, and it's funny because I feel like I I became the person that was more uncomfortable with doing things that I felt like weren't, you know what I'm saying, or trying new shit. Like, mm. at a certain point, you know, when certain things, I started, I saw certain things happening in, in hip-hop for women. You know, just like the change of the focus from it being about lyrics, it being about talent, and it being more so just about selling sexual Fake features. Mm-hmm. So you exactly. thought I go from the Queen Latifah that you grew up on to a whole other Lil' Kim Hardcore poster type thing. And the crazy part is that Lil' Kim Hardcore album, changed, it, that shit made me step my game up as a rapper. Like, that shit is amazing. But I want to focus on that and not focus on... The other part, the other part. Yeah. Right. Well, like let me bars. do that naturally when I do that women we do that you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? It's, it should be effortless we do that but do I want it to be publicized and it to be the only thing because I feel like if that is the draw then once you get it where do we go next yeah Ooh. yeah bar look <laughs> bar uh, I mean it's, it's, Since we on the topic Of bars as well You know uh, That that was you and Shauna's Like last album mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. 2022 is here And yes. I see y'all In the studio Working Yes Together I gotta move my glasses <laughs> On that one <laughs> It I feels mean, amazing bro That's my you, sister yeah. You gotta You gotta I mean what Can we expect something Something soon From you two Yeah we got a joint Coming out soon um, And we got we have quite a few joints, right? We got one we itching to put out really, really soon called Dreams, um, which will come from a project. But that joint, that's going to come, the, the single, that's going to come soon, very soon. Like, we're working on that now. The music is, yeah, that music is done. That's good to see you. We got a later. few, though. Like, it's a lot of songs, and then, you know, out of that batch, you be like, ooh. Three right here. That's <laughs> what, gonna be a problem. What took what took the reconnection so long to happen? Um, I think it's about where you at in your because you know as you get older, you get other responsibilities. Your perception on shit change. What you want to do change. Um, I think it was a mixture of all those things. It's just timing, you know. Um, truth be told, we've been recording for the past three years secret secretly. Well, the cat's out the bag. Yeah, it's out the bag now because Shannon decided to go live in the studio. (laughs) 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 So it would have been like, wow, surprise, look. But, yeah, Yeah, it's not going to be like that. It's still a surprise. Interest of social media. It is, it is, you know, but for that close group of people that are, you know, that maybe follow us or, you know, our fans, they going to know. They they know now. They're waiting. We're waiting. Uh, I'm so happy about that. Before we get into this music break, Tifa, I got to ask you. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, changing the game pops out, boom, kills the game. You've been in the game for some years. So what have yeah. you seen change in the game in general? Like what some changes that you've seen occur since the years you've been around? Man, I, okay, so I've seen some dope shit happen with the music and the way that we're able to get our music directly to consumers but I feel like for a lot of artists, not all, the caliber and quality of the music. Like, I'm not excited about R&B singers being as ratchet on a record as a rapper. That just, for me, that ain't it. I'm from Ashford and Simpson. It's like, one way. Like, Y'all want to hear singing. Like, okay. Right, you know what I'm saying? Uh, new edition. Um, you know. Ooh. Like the the good vibes. I, I mean, feel you. and it don't. I'm not saying the sound because that would be a dated sound. But today, but I just Liberal really content. miss. Yeah, I, I miss that. Serenade um, me first, <laughs> man. You know what I'm saying? Let me put on what I need to put on to go to that zone where we getting just reckless. I don't want to hear my R and B singers singing that. That's just that's just me for sure. But that's just taste. But um, and then I I would like to see. More balance in the in the hip hop, mm. you know what I'm when saying. When you say balance, are you speaking like men, women balance, or like? I'm not. I'm not saying men, women. I'm saying um, the type of hip hop. Okay. Like, okay. I feel like everybody's okay. kind of doing the same Ooh, thing right gotcha. now. You know, and 
that's cool. I think it's dope. I just, I want to see the other side, too. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we used to have where you had an N.W.A. and a Snoop, and then you had, you know, Trick Daddy, and then you had Nas, and then you had Mob Deep. And you know what I'm saying? Then you it had was way Goody more Ma. Duality. It was exactly. Yeah. So right. I would love to see syndicate that. Syndicate as well. Yes. <laughs> I would love to see that. Um, I, I appreciate artists like J. Cole. I appreciate um, Kendrick for introducing that. I really appreciate Corday. Oh, why be in Corday? He be snapping. Yeah, yes. I, I really <laughs> appreciate him. Um, amongst other artists, you know. I just like to see artists. Uh, I, li- I like to see, you know, options, man. Like, I don't always want to just vibe to the exact same thing. Over and over. Yeah. And over and again. Plethora of shit. And- <laughs> <laughs> the Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. So, I kind of want to take it back just a tad bit before we hop into radio because I was thinking over the break. So, one thing you talked about was seeing the shift for women artists going yeah. from being very lyrical to what I like to call pussy rap. Oh, oh, see. Okay. All right. I think, well. Well, a lot of it is. Well, now. A okay, I guess that's is, what though. I'm leading into. So, how do you feel about the fact that now a lot of women rapping is just pussy rap? Like, it's so heavily sexually based like do you think women will ever be able to like come back from that or do you think we kind of stuck in that lane now because so many women artists are not even leading with bars no more they just lead with sex i'm not stuck in shit Um, period yeah i i don't think that you know i just think that that's what so here's the thing when you go to other people to give you the money or the resources you need to do what you feel like you called to do, then you're giving them the ability to say, this is what that looks like, right? And I think that that's what the labels that are funding the pussy rap, as you're talking about, I think that that's what they're asking for because it's an easy sale. Microwavable. Mm -hmm. It's an easy sale, right? Um, Because sex sales, it has since the beginning of time. Do I think that we're stuck there? No. I think it's about those of us that love the music and we love to write and we love bars and just, you know, the whole process of creating songs and moving people with those songs. We just got to put our own shit out. We have to create our own lanes. And I think that the people that do that are the most successful. Mm -hmm. I think the people that go to other people for resources and wait for somebody to give you that cosign or wait for somebody to give you what you need to go make something happen versus starting where you are with what you already have. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all didn't wait for a GCI to say, we want Illinois radio. Y'all was like, fuck that. We have these resources. We're going to start where we are. And that's it, you know. And I think that the more that artists that are really artists do that, then it'll shift. You know what I'm saying? But in all honesty, a lot of artists that are really artists just not as excited about it no more because of that. So it does hinder growth. You know what I'm saying? In a way, but we just got to step out on faith, man, and just do what we know we called to do. Like like you came in the door and said, uh, you got to do what you love. Yeah. From the heart. Like once something, once something feel like work, and you, you know, you fighting yourself to show up for that shit, it's time for a change. It's time for a shift. So did rap, rapping become not fun for you at one point? Nope. My One of my Achilles is one of my weaknesses was when I have hard times, I go silent. Mm. Mm. I wow. go in. That's me. I, I know that in. feeling, yeah. So I had to learn as an artist to not go in but to go pin yeah. <laughs> I like that okay. uh, uh, and uh, that that can be hard right cause when you going through shit you your most vulnerable but that's also when God is doing the most work on you so you really your strongest mm-hmm. you know but it takes man it just takes a certain type of faith to trust that um, and sometimes it takes failing by just going in so many times so where you be like I gotta do something different this time Mm-hmm. You know, and really just stepping out on faith and trusting. But 
Um, actually, no, I did. He told me that. He told me that before I actually was able to comprehend it and understand what he was saying. Like, yo, you have to stop. When things get hard, you isolate. You have to stop doing that, and you have to dive into your music even harder when things get hard. I was like, yeah, I... <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm like, he was right. <laughs> it's better, you know. Um, but, you know, that's lessons that we learned along the way. What's it like even receiving life lessons from people like No ID? Like, yeah. do you wish you would have listened more back then and maybe it would have taken you somewhere else? Yeah, I'll be having those moments. Um, I'll be having those moments big time. Just... Because I had my son at a point in my career where I really could have dipped out. I'm not the type to leave my child, but take him with me. But the thought of how scary that is to be, you know what I'm saying, in another state without your child. So what people don't know is, one, I moved to Atlanta when I was pregnant to work with no ID. Hmm. We already had, we're working with the syndicate stuff, right? But when Shauna did the DTP project and he first moved to Atlanta, um, I was moving there to work with him. And I freaked out and got scared. Another one, y'all going to be like, what the fuck, t <laughs> another, another one was, um, you know, yeah, used to come on my show a lot. Mm -hmm. Yep. Like whenever he was in town, we would just like freestyle or whatever. And he um he called me one time and was like he called me right after the accident actually and he was like gee come out here come get on the two words remix what the fuck t <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't yeah. even get what it out fast enough oh um, shit two words and two I, words shot town uh, weighs uh, me crazy what? I know I know I'll be kicking myself in the ass for that but you know what Man. can I say? You know, sometimes you allow fear to stop you from what? following your... What was you scared of? I, I was a new mom. I was a new mom. So going out there to live and just focus on music, where was my bread coming from? Who was going to help me with my child? You know what I'm saying? When you're a mother and you're a new mother, you have a very distinct idea and vision of the type of mother that you want to be mm -hmm. and what you don't want to be. So how was I going to be her... And be her. I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that. And also, my faith wasn't where it needed to be as a as an individual. I'm just being honest. And it wasn't. That shit hurt my soul then. You know what I'm saying? But I felt like I was making the right choice. Like, it's okay. I could do what I need to do here. Just, oh, my God. Everybody's out there. <laughs> <laughs> All my friends. <laughs> do you think that's tough for, like, that's one thing that makes it hard for women to get in this industry and to be oh, successful? Yeah. Because they have the balance, not only being an artist, but mm -hmm. they have the balanced motherhood. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. It's really hard because, you know, like when you when you coming up, you really around whatever type of industry shit you could get around. Mm -hmm. Right. When you own, you create what that energy is because motherfuckers trying to move around you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because you the bag. So it's different. So in that space, like I came from the. We the bag space to the I got to get back in the bag space. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it was like, fuck, I don't know. I, I, I need some definites to be a mom out there. Like, where am I staying? How am I getting around? My son's schooling, money, health care, like all that shit. Like, I, as it just being me, I could have just went and spent the night at niggas' cribs. That wouldn't have. Right. That's very different, you know? Um <laughs> I never wanted to leave my child here with my mom. For sure. So, when it's you, definitely hard. When you talk about your faith, like, being that you were a new mom, and I think now it's talked about, like, postpartum depression is, mm -hmm. like, more talked about, like, mm -hmm. looking back at it, do you think that maybe you were dealing with any type of post, like, postpartum that was kind of, like, throwing you and your faith off? Because... I, I hear that about a lot of new moms. They realize, mm -hmm. like, once they get some help, like, oh, I was going through postpartum depression, and that completely deterred me from doing what I wanted to do. So looking back on that, do you feel like it was more so your mental health, or was it, like, your spiritual health that wasn't in intact? I think it was my spiritual health. Got you. Um, and just in the sense that I didn't, I didn't believe in the gift that had created all these other resources and opportunities for me already to that point. 
You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I had already proved to myself, you dope. This shit works. Because the Change in the Game album, it didn't only open opportunities for us. It opened opportunities. for Like, that was really Kanye's first time selling a beat to a major. Mm -hmm. I think he... I think Grav, because Grav was on the major when he did it. But, you know, and then rapping on the album, too. So it was that. It was uh, another producer, Echo, from Chicago, Cap One, um, Shauna's little brother, Mike Guy. Like, it was a lot of other Chicago people that got opportunities and were able to blossom from those. You know what I'm saying? That album. I think it was just about me not just trusting my who I was. <laughs> it's funny you say that because we got a single loaded up right now called "I Don't Trust Them." <laughs> <laughs> you dropped this in 2021. I mean, let people know about about this single before we get into it. But that um, produced by Echo, um, man, and Echo singing the hook on there too. You could go back to the Change in the Game album and hear production that he did on there. Um, man, this is really just a. A story on some Chicago shit But I really I was like man I gotta spit a certain kind of way As my reintroduction I wasn't worried about Sounding like nobody I just wanted to let Like hey She's a spitter Be careful I wanted to You know Make that that. statement (laughs) You did that Hey y'all keep it locked Because uh, up next We gonna be talking about radio We gonna be talking about Genius documentary And more So here's T for it I don't trust them Right here on Illinois Radio Love Make sure to check out the Ill List playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. I remember when I was interning at Windy City Underground mm. and playing your music and I was like, this mm. can't be the same Tifa that was on the radio. And I remember further than that, being a youngster watching Rap City in a basement and seeing the syndicate video, mm-hmm. the one the one in black and white. When I was jumping in the bed. Yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. How, I, My mom was, was like, why you jumping in that bed like that? Yeah. <laughs> I remember seeing that and then like to just be here sitting right here with you now is like pretty dope. You know what I mean? I appreciate I that. wanted to know like, you know, now, you know, well, the transition to radio, like where did that come like? Yo, that was, it was a transition to radio, I felt like at a point was a gift and a curse. So after, um, right after I had my son, I got a phone call. First of all, you know, I got a lot of friends that work just in entertainment, DJs, artists, all that, producers. And um, my crew, especially at that time, was uh, Terry Hunter, Vita, you know, and they were just like, I met them through uh, No ID because I moved back from Atlanta. And Dion was like, go to Atlanta. And I was like, I'm scared, nigga. I'm about myself. And then I went, I came back. He's like, work with Terry Hunter until, you know, you get settled and you come back. So that's how I met Terry. And Terry was plugged with all the DJs in the city. And um, they were looking. I remember Sundance was going to, uh, I can't remember where she was going, but she was had a full-time offer to work somewhere and do like a a morning show or a midday shift and she took it and you know she did the A side and the B side Um, and they were like man who can we get who would be dope who would be dope and uh, Vaughn and Terry was like Tifa Tifa could do that shit Tifa Tifa and I got a call from um, Carla Boatner she was the the, uh, not the music director assistant music director at the time and I was like, man, get the fuck out of here. This ain't GCL. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny because I had to apologize. Like, like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. So I went in. I did an air check. And Big Papa, y'all know Big Papa? Everybody know Big Papa. And Big Papa was uh, the producer there at the time. And he was like, all right, come on in here. We're going to record your air check. And I'm like, this is crazy. So I'm freaking out um just because i grew up listening to gci too right and um i was like he was giving me these papers to read the liners right and Mm -hmm. we people the average person never knows that you receive those things on a paper and you have to read it with character you know what i'm saying right (laughs) and i was like yeah can i rap this so i did my air check looking at the info and freestyling the liners. Oh. Damn. And Elroy was like, this is 
Yeah, I would have been like, that. she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, I am okay. And then um, I was like, well, they offered me the job. I was like, well, can I, can I freestyle all the time? I don't know if y'all remember, but for like the first six months, I used to freestyle mm-hmm. on my talk breaks. Because I was nervous. Oh, shit. That, so that's how you fought your nerves? That's Free- how I fought my that's nerves. That's a gift. It, yeah. I, um, for me, the perception of it was like, usually when I perform, I can see. Even if it's 500 people, if it's 1,000, if it's tens of thousands, I can see them. I can see you nod and do this. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, this. Yeah. That's well, a cosign. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? That's unverbal communication. Up here, yeah. you don't see none of that. Yeah, you got a vision. You see a wall. Yeah. You're like, man, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> you you know yourself. Know? Exactly. So for me, I knew I was good at that. I knew I was good at that. But I was like, am I enough just talking? You know what I'm saying? And um, as I got really great feedback, I just started doing both. And then I put the freestyles on, rocked the mic, and started just having my show and just having fun. Yeah. Hmm, see, I, I hear that key word, having fun. Having fun. I, I, we, I'm going to bring that back up in a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> what, was, what was the music scene like here in Chicago at that time? It was amazing. It was amazing. Um, at that time, artists, I felt like we had things like the seminars. We had things like um, the group. I can't think of the group right now. They're going to be mad at me. They used to do the events at the Crocodile where artists could go and play their music and vibe and perform, and all the DJs was in the room. I felt like um, we had mix shows that played Chicago music. Um it was really dope. I felt like my show added to that. Um, it was definitely different. It was definitely that mixture that we talked about. Right. You know what I'm saying? Of uh, all, you had artists that was out here on some, you know, the P rap, and you had artists that was out here rapping over house beats. You know what I'm saying? Hip hop stuff, East Coast style stuff. Uh, South style Like it was just A mixture It was like a melting pot You know People were very creative So many artists And then I even remember Back then What was dope And how A way that we made Chicago radio Sound like Chicago Was artists used to Jump on the major Artist records And you would hear them Rap Somewhere on the song Like remember The So Gone With TJ we had our own version of the joint. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did multiple records like that. I did a Justin Timberlake record like that. Like, multiple records. A right. lot of artists would do that. And that just made it, it feel like us. Like, we had segments like the Bad Boy Radio do the birthday line. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Classic. We had juke mixes. It just felt like the crib. Man. It felt like the crib. A lot of people talk about, like, you hear people say Chicago, like, when it comes to music, that it's a it's a uh, crab in a bucket type of place. It's no support here. It's no, it's no real. Pl- it was no platforms here mm-hmm. to help artists. Like, but hearing you speak on it, it sound like it was. Mm-hmm. Was there any more platforms other than you know what you was doing and WGC I was doing at that time that was helping artists? Yeah, I, I mean, you had, um, you also had like record pools where artists could go and perform in front of the DJs. You know what I'm saying? You could come and get your music to all the DJs in the room. I'm starting to slowly see a resurgence of that again. We had a lot of events in the clubs where artists were performing. Um, And not to say that it wasn't like crabs in a barrel, but sometimes you get people that don't know how to necessarily work their number Mm -hmm. that feel like that. You know what I'm saying? Like It's definitely not a place where anything is going to get handed to you. I'm going to say Chicago is full of people that know how to hustle. And it's full of people that if they really want it, they will outwork you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right about and that. And it's full of raw talent. Mm. Raw talent. Like, man, I mean, from the musician side to performance side to dance to film, you know what I'm saying, to lyricism. Like, it's full of raw talent. Look what just came up out of Chicago. The documentary that highlighted a multitude of artists. Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Like, you, you know some of the people that were in there? Yeah. Yeah. A lot. Man. Jeez. I mean, J.I.V., Abstract Mind State. What Cootie, you know, has been doing forever for the city. Him and Danny with Channel Zero. Tari Ture, um, Books. 
Um, like I, the list goes on and on. Rhyme Fest. Y'all know how long Rhyme Fest been, been around? around? Okay. Yeah. And there's so many other people that really are part of that whole story, that piece of history that just didn't end up in the video either. You know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying that to say, like Brian All Day Miller. People sleep on day. Um, I'm just saying that to say that there's a wide range of really talented people. Speaking on that documentary, yeah. what's your you thoughts? Was in that yeah, documentary. You was in that documentary. I was. They got Free, me good. Jerry. Freestyling with Kanye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we saw you. <laughs> they got me right after I had my son. I was like, and I didn't even. So I used to just get these calls, like, yeah, I'm at the crib. What's up? You know, he would hear me on air and slide through the show. You know, often. Um, yeah, they called me at a bad day that time. I didn't expect that call. <laughs> but I also got the call before I, from him. I had all, well, I didn't get that call because that was planned. I knew Doug was coming up. Wait, when you Just say Roll. him, who is him? Yay. Okay. Okay. Um, I knew Just Roll and Doug were coming up that day because they was scheduled to come up. Hold on, hold on. You talking about the time when Buddy when, was yeah. talking slick? About Ooh. Kanye when he dis Kanye, you talking about Doug? Yeah, so you knew about <laughs> uh, that. So you, oh. but you no, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. I'm not saying like you knew he was coming up, but you didn't yeah, know I knew he was, was coming up. up. So let me say this: like when you from a community of like if you a poet, right, and you got an open mic, that's huge. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You plug with all the poets. You let the poets come through when the poets hit you. Like I need to come through. Thanks. Right. You know, and that's what my show was. So my show was an outlet. Of course, to people that I didn't know, a lot of new talent that I felt like, all right, you ready? I'll put you on because I got to stamp that, right? But to the people that helped mold me, yes, sir. This is our platform, what right. you need to do. You know what I'm saying? So when bro called, like, yeah, I want to, um, I got some new music I want to play, just shoot the shit. Like, anybody know Doug? Doug is super peaceful. Mm -hmm. Like, his spirit is, like, he's really one of the dopest people I've ever met. Um, so when he hit me, like, yo, I'm going to come up, I'm going to play some music. And I knew he was working with Ro, cool. I don't need to really get into the particulars. It's Doug Infinite. He just did No ID's album with uh, No ID. I right. want some of his beats. I know what this is. He also did Common's album with No ID. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you don't really question... <laughs> You don't, they, they, you don't they, question they got, that that much. You yeah. never saw it. You never <laughs> saw it coming. So <laughs> when it happens, you're like, bro. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know, at the end of the day, family beef sometimes. Shit, like, Doug taught Kanye so much. When when Dion wouldn't open a door for him, uh, he would go to Doug and learn. You right. know what I'm saying? So it was really like you just first like, name basis. Yeah. She Dion. Uh, yeah, you know I'm, like, you I'm like I'm like Dion. No idea. Okay. <laughs> it's like family quarrel. Yeah, you know? listen, I, you I don't want to get into that shit, and you don't want to be on no sides. Mm -hmm. You want to remain my like, name been in it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you're, so do you remember when you found out Kanye? When, when Kanye like damn Kanye was well, on his way up here now. I got you. I knew right what here. it was. I knew it was when like that wasn't on camera because they weren't there yet. I told Pop I was like, bro, that was yay. He's coming. I know he heard that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and they got it on camera, him yeah. in the car, listening. Exactly. So, I mean, and that's my fam, too. Like, Cootie, like, oh, my God. that's my. I remember going to Atlanta with Cootie to watch him do comedy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Before, like, during Channel Zero, but he was also a comedian for a long time. So, it's all family. It's all family. It's just because of the way life goes and people are who they are mm -hmm. Shh. those moments people get to see those intimate details of how the blueprint and the path has been drawn so you know how was saying? it seeing all that all over again those crazy so look this the thing like i got the i got a i got a small heads up like yo yeah i think you in a dock because i knew it was happening mm -hmm. um i knew it was happening it was my friends and my family but I was like, oh, okay, cool. So I knew it was one of those times. But I didn't know what time, Which time it was. It was. Yeah. I had no clue. And when I looked at it, I was like <laughs> 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 I'm grateful to be in it because it's a you know, it's a huge part of history for us. I was like, it would be that time. But because of what it is, you just like, man, I'm just grateful. Fuck it. Whatever. 
you know and that's an honest moment i think that um that that uncomfortableness and that pain from that moment drove Ye even harder mm-hmm. to prove that what God had showed him about him was true mm. and written and was going to happen. To see him go yeah. from where, from 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 then to, to now, now, like oh my god, yeah, like how does that make you feel? Like to see your cousin, your brother, like nigga, yeah, <laughs> and, and the connection too, you know, on that and the how's the you know connection? You know, I haven't I haven't spoke with Ye in years. The last time I I was in L.A. I can't even remember how many years ago it was. I don't think it was more than ten. But the last time I was in L.A., I actually asked him to work for a beat and he was working on an album at the time he was like gee I can't do it right now and I was like okay I was hurt and then when I was at the plane he called me he was like man I love you G he was like I love you too bro and I got on the plane that was my last time talking oh, about it. I love you that's G love. that's a that's yeah, real that's Chicago look I love the G on it the G on it the G on it really hit because you know that's when it, when it come from here it come from here when it's really a G you know you know, that, look, that's the real Chicago shit and that's all you heard Ayo G what you want with G all through the that, that, look. That's, but he a good dude he's a really good dude he's very honest he's very transparent um, about what he wants and his expectation and how he's gonna go about to get it and I more than anything I'm extremely encouraged and it re-inspired me to see that you know and built my faith up even more to Mm -hmm. see that man when you know when you know God put something on your heart no matter what obstacles are in front of you no one sees what you see but you Mm -hmm. do it Mm. man you right about that I mean let's talk about that's the main thing that I got from that Cause that's that's what I was just about to ask you. Like at, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, like when it comes to that documentary, you know, what do you want people to take from it as a whole from the city? Cause I'm gonna get into some a little deep after you talk about this. I'm getting to some a little deep, but I want to you know hear your initial thoughts on how that documentary was for Chicago. Man, I think that one for a lot of people that didn't know, it should have taught them a lot about their history, right? Um, it should have shown a lot of um, connectedness. Right, from a lot of other things that have happened in the past and in present, people should be able to put pieces together now and understand, you know, the path or his path and everybody's path and how it intertwines more. And then the main thing is like, stay inspired, stay inspired, believe on, believe in yourself, focus on the goal, focus on the goal. Stuff gonna happen. You can't control it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Let it be what it is. Like. He never let anything stop him from what he knew. And Facts. still doesn't. At all. It's worse than that. He got money. So yeah. <laughs> y'all got Billion. a problem. Yeah. Well, you Billions. know what? He's been proven. He's yeah. proved. He's Pro- it's been proven that. It's evidence For sure. that this works. I mean, since this doc has dropped, Tifa, have you seen any changes in the Chicago industry? I think that um, I haven't seen anything but I see small things within people. I see people collabing. Um, I see people re-energized, you know what I'm saying, to go back at it or even just to continue at it at the rate that they've been doing and wanting to bring more opportunity here. But I think it's kind of early for there to be something really tangible that we can say, this happened. This is, you know, what we see. But I will tell you this. I will tell the city this. Know that every other market, every other state is fucking inspired. Tremendously. So what we don't do is on us. Other people are moving. Know that. The Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. A lot of people feel like radio here isn't what it used to be. Mm-hmm. I wanted to know, can you tell us like what changed from the WGCIs and Power Lane 2s from what they used to be to, like you don't feel that Chicago connection no more? So for me, like, I got bored because I feel like you got to let a trendsetter be a trendsetter. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
you can't put a collar on a lion, like, and expect your shit to be dope. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um, The whole control aspect, I think, is really hard for creative people. And that's why a lot of creative people like you guys, you go out and you venture and you do you the way that you want to see it done. Because being under the thumb of somebody that is not necessarily a creative person, but they're more business, more corporate, they're trying to pull a dollar out of what you do. They're mm-hmm. trying to monetize it. You're trying to move the culture. Those are two very different things. Very different. So that's one, is understanding that and making sure you position yourself properly with that in mind. Um, Man, that's like the main thing. <laughs> Yeah. Um, two, yeah, you know, you the jewel with that. I think people, fr- if you want Chicago radio to sound like Chicago, Chicago people got to run it. That's all I want. That's, Bing that's, bong. That's it. Bing bong. This is. You know, because they no nobody's gonna understand the culture or what people want to hear or the listeners. I think that's what made my show really great. Cause I spoke the language. Mm-hmm. I spoke the language, and then when I needed to get serious, I could articulate my thoughts and get serious. Um, if you can't speak the language authentically, or if you only know what somebody told you about the city, mm-hmm. like we so culture heavy, that's tough. You know, um, our like all every area of culture f- is rich in Chicago. Fashion, extremely rich. Music. Extremely rich, food, the nightlife, riches. extremely rich. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you got to be able to talk that language. You know, um, yeah, you need to be from the crib. I fully agree with you on that. Seeing how a lot of these syndicated shows is coming on board, mm-hmm. I feel like it's affecting. Uh, you know what we do here. Like you said, it's really. I mean, we of course we do have some. A radio host from Chicago, but mm-hmm. a lot of these shows is being syndicated outside. What changes of, of the Chicago. kids too, and what they understand culture to be mm-hmm. and authentic- authenticity to be? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. speaking since I'm talking on syndication, why? Like you always did night shows. Mm-hmm. Um, it was always night shows for mm-hmm. you. Have you ever thought about doing like morning? I did. Um, at one point when I was at Power, I remember Trey left. And I was trying to get that slot. I don't know if y'all remember. I was on for probably two months. Was that Trey slot? I think it was Trey slot. It was when he was doing middays, though, not mornings. And and actually, he left, and the DJ at the time left. I th- I can't remember the DJ's name. He's my Latino homie. But so I brought in AM PM. Mm. She was cold. I, I didn't care. Like, I, that was my thing. I would bring in DJs. I would bring in new jocks and train them, whatever it was. Like, I just wanted it to be the most amazing experience, period, right, on air. And, you know, just the powers it be just felt like I was just good for just hip-hop. Like, they didn't see value in that. Mm. Unfortunate for them, however. Very. Yeah. Very unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even thinking about the show you had with Frankie Rob, yeah. uh, Ladies' man. Night, man, that it was hilarious. We used to have so much fun, so much fun, so Dang. much fun. I always had some element to my shows where I felt like, yo, this shit is just a riot. This is an amazing time. <laughs> <laughs> For real, I just had to keep that. Like even when I was doing the basement, we started doing the funny yeah. videos. Me and Hot Rod. I posting pe- them shits to social media. He was media. filming the videos. Yeah. Like, I used to hear him laughing in the background. I'm like, that's Hot Rod ass filming. <laughs> we used to do that shit on his iPad. <laughs> that's dope. That's yep. cool. Damn. So, just always trying to be forward thinking and, you know, just have fun and incorporate new stuff and just, you know, be different. What was, uh, what was, what's your favorite interview of all time? You've been in the game for some years, so I, that's, might take you some time to think Man, about this one. you know what? It was Snoop. It was Snoop. And the reason why it was my favorite was because, like, you know how you be having little moments that just help you relax about shit? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Seeing how comfortable and chill he was with just being him and it was exactly who he was in his music just made me be like, that's the lane, that's it, right there. 
Man, then he came up there and uh, tried to light some weed. <laughs> in the in station? The station. <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> Look, Papa was like, no, 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 no. You can't smoke that in here, Snoop. <laughs> I was like, Papa finna have a heart attack. And then he got on the, got on the air and he was like, yeah, Teffa, you know what I'm saying? I was like. Get my name. Tifa. Tifa. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> oh my! And DMX, he was hilarious too. DMX did like the weed in the studio. He said, "Right." Yeah, he said, we was like, Pop was like, "Man, we ain't even let Snoop smoke." He was like, "That's fucked up." Snoop's a cool nigga too. <laughs> 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 hey, no. Nigga, turn the camera in the hallway. <laughs> uh, he's like, that's fucked up. Cool <laughs> and proceeds to hit the weed. And proceeds to hit the weed, yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. Have you ever, like, who's, like, somebody that you enjoy, like, continuously to interview? The, like, somebody you had to double back on, like, you knew, like, oh, my girl coming, I'm, oh, this is going to be lit. Mm, continuous interview. I can't even think of nobody. So many people ran through the show. Well, I guess my continuous interview would be yay. Oh, okay. That would be my... Give us a yay moment. What's that was, a, I guess oh, hell that would yeah. would be my continuous interview. I mean, shit, y'all just saw one on the dot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Did he say, how you let them do me like that on the radio? <laughs> Man, G, you ain't know he was doing hit that shit first? I didn't hear it first, bro. Man, that's all right. <laughs> His feelings was hurt. Yeah, he, yeah, he, was, he was hurt. Like I said, uh, sitting in the car as a youngin', hearing you at night turn me up. Um, on Lakeshore Drive at the crib, uh, I remember I used to just sit in the car and listen. Man, that's <laughs> so much love, bro. Like, it, it's Because you never know that. I got a funny-ass story, too, I could tell y'all. Like, oh, I'm going to pick one. So that made me think about my guy Lee used to be a producer after Papa switched to another show, right? No, okay. I think he switched to another station. And now young Lee, he's like a huge record exec. Right? But we used to do this segment. Um, I can't even remember the fucking name of the segment. We used to do this segment where if somebody dodging you, call us. We're going to call them from the station on three-way. <laughs> oh, wow. So, ooh. <laughs> ooh. Uh, Y'all get me the up. Oh, if the block list was popping back in. Wow. People was getting people caught up. Hey, that shit was so we was getting people caught up like that, but then it'd be like, Parents calling. My son not answering the phone. I want y'all to call his phone and then you answer and then chime me in and then he gonna tell me what he is. <laughs> Bro. Y'all was getting kids whoopings. Bro. Kind of Cussed out on the radio. <laughs> hey, folks, we heard your mother cuss you out yesterday. They was in school <laughs> like. Damn, yeah, boy, you got your ass when you got hold in. <laughs> they was getting kids whoopings and that they was getting the that people was divorces. <laughs> then I remember one time. I called my grandmother on the air. <laughs> and my grandmother is super, like, very, you know, classy, traditional. You know what I'm saying? You don't do anything, like, remain a lady, right? And I called her one day, and I was like, yeah, uh, Granny, remember you said you don't pass gas? She thought it was just us talking on the phone, because she used to tell me all the time, ladies don't pass gas, ladies don't poop. And I'd be like, you poop. <laughs> you poop. I ain't gonna call you no lie. I don't wanna get smacked. Oh, cause you couldn't say lie. Right. Yeah. Couldn't what? say lie. You had to say tell them the so story. So I did yep. it while I was yep. on air. I did it on air live. And she was, she talked to me for like <laughs> You better get me off this right now. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Oh, so she was listening. That shit was so funny though. Damn. That shit was so funny though. It's good you have memorable moments, you know, uh, making that transition from music to radio. That's not an easy transition to do at all. And it's not it. easy. It's not easy to do both. I remember hosting the Big Jam, performing at the Big Jam. All that. Oh, you yeah. was tired. Yeah. What's, your tired. Favorite, what's your favorite Big Jam? Shit, I don't know. I did like three of them boys. Probably the one I performed at when I did Jenga Lane. Jenga Lane, Jenga Lane. Hey. Yeah, probably that. You remember the lineup? I don't. <laughs> you just remember her performance, my brother. Here, yeah, that's, that's the most memorable right there. I got a, I got a, all right, I got a, one more story for y'all. So I'm hosting, 
I can't remember the name of the club, Joe. Too much weed back in the day. Terrible. Um, no, it's not terrible. It was a club. <laughs> it was a club out south, popular club, like 50 yard line or something. But it wasn't a 50, but it was in Harvey. And I used to do a live broadcast from there, right? When I was on, when I was on GCI. I, I feel like I know exactly what you're talking about. So I got a picture in my phone that show. Oh my god. Anyway, the club used to be crazy. And the station would be like, yo, this shit is, like, the person that was in charge at the time, that was the music director at the time, yeah. she was, like, ready to really take my career to another level. She saw something in me. Um, the club promoter. Chris Kelly. No, I'm talking about the music director okay. at the time. This okay. is post-Elroy. Um, so the club would be popping, and I would do my A-side, no, my B-side live, right? Be packed. The ratings were going crazy. So one one Saturday night, GLC called my phone like, G, we heard you on air. You at the club? I'm like, yeah. He like, um, man, Ye just landed. We finna come through. I'm like, I right, bet. I said, come through the side, though. Don't come through the front. We'll, we, you know, figured everything out. So y'all know about a live broadcast, especially if it's a party. Right. Mm -hmm. You host the party. Mm -hmm. You host the broadcast. And you host the broadcast. <laughs> Them joints don't mix well, right? Because in the party, you potty mouth, right? You going in. So my, um, I'm not going to even name the person that was running the board. <laughs> He'll be like, why are you doing me like that? <laughs> but um, So it was rather new for them, too. It was a new experience for all of us. But I'm hosting. I didn't tell them yay was coming. I'm gonna tell nobody. This was right around the time of la 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 la. Can't wait till I, I get my oh, this money is yeah. right. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. What? So he come in through the side door, jump on stage with me immediately. I'm like, you was supposed to wait. <laughs> <laughs> jump on stage with me immediately, and the DJ Vaughn was like, oh, threw the record on, right? No, oh, we going live. Tifa, you on the air. None of that. So I'm hosting the party. The, the party. party. The oh, air. <laughs> Lit. Dead. Lit. Look at her face, though. Lit. <laughs> I'm like, Chicago in the motherfucking building. <laughs> 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 That's the issue. had a dumb button. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, back at the station, like, oh, so many of <laughs> Man, I get up. We finally wrap it, and you know it was an amazing night. And I walk down to the side to where the setup is, and they like, um, you know, Chris on the phone. I'm like, what? Oh, okay, we talking in the morning. Like, no, 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 no. Chris on the phone. He on the phone. Chris phone. on the like. phone. <laughs> all of that, all of that shit went live. <laughs> Yo. Damn. So ultimately, and nobody knows this, what happened was I was suspended for two weeks for that. Damn. The station had to pay FCC fines. Oh, I was getting loose, baby, on the mic. What? You went to a Tifa party back in the day? <laughs> Listen. Um, but I was suspended for two weeks, and these two weeks were right. People didn't really catch it because it was like, my birthday was right in the same two weeks. And I had already bought a bunch of time to throw a huge birthday party. The birthday party was off the chain. And I was also uh, required to take another FCC training mm. before I returned back to work. And so caught up in my shit, I didn't take the training. And that's how I lost my job at GCI. Oh, oh damn. damn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Because we showed up and asked how you transitioned to power. That was why. <laughs> Damn, T. That was sick. That wasn't even your fault. That was the littlest yeah, WCI I've ever been, like, though, because of Yang just popping up out of nowhere. Yeah. When was he popping up? This then, like it that? Not, like, never. Performing his hit? At, oh, damn. Man. Dang, I would have beat the engineer up. 
You should slap the back Look, of his neck. That ain't one of the type of moments. <laughs> but now. I wasn't fired because of the mishap on air. It was the FCC. It was the FCC. fact that I didn't, didn't go take yeah. my training. Right. They yeah. took that. But like, even the oh, suspension. Bitch, you feeling though. yourself? But even the suspension. Yeah, but all that started though. from that. Which it all started from that. You got a part of it. They want stuff yeah, like that you now. Definitely should have smacked the Damn. back of that neck. You need video footage of that night. I had a photo. Sheesh, that's that's saved right. in them favorites. Look, yeah. that, the radio stations want no, stuff like that now, though. They, they want weird stuff like. What's crazy is this finna freak y'all out. My mom, you know, with the doc wow. and everything going on, my mom texted me that photo. Wow. And I was like, where you get that? <laughs> hey, you can like, leave it, it to the album. Can he leave it the to the mama. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Damn, that. that is lit. But at the end of the day, it was on me. It was on me. I can't blame that on nobody. I was sick to my stomach. That that. <laughs> now, uh, you know, after radio, uh, you know, you transitioned to being a teacher. Yeah. Well, I, I was actually teaching part of the time while I was at radio. So I was teaching part time. Um, no, crazy. I was teaching. I was at radio full time and teaching at Westinghouse. But like you said, I was in hmm. the evenings. Yeah. And then um, I started teaching part-time at the next school, which was Al Raby. And then that's when I was at Raby, that's when I just got, I don't know, I just wasn't as interested anymore. I, I didn't feel like my my creativity was was fought, being fostered there, to be honest. I, I was, you know, I used to do this uh, old school hip hop karaoke thing and people would come out and do old school hip hop karaoke, the shit was crazy. Mm -hmm. Like we would go around and do it and then it got to the point where the station wanted me to do it so much cause they were selling it, excuse me, to um, clients. And I was like, yeah, no, that's not where I'm at in my life right now. I don't wanna do that. Um, these videos though, this shit's fun. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so it was just stuff like that. You know, I didn't want to necessarily be told what to do. I'm not the type of person where you're going to tell me what to say. And I didn't have that at GCI. So I was really trusted to just do whatever was comfortable to me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't used used with that, used to that at Crawford. And I just didn't like the restraints anymore. I was just like, man, just not what's happening. You know, and I feel like, I kind of felt like, I just, I don't know. I just didn't feel like what I was doing was as impactful. Which I hear differently now because people that yeah. love well, the basement. You, you, man. I was playing the shit that, <laughs> man, they like, where you get that? I, I got to be honest with you for a moment, too. When I, when the documentary came on and <clears throat> on episode one, I saw you, I say, what the hell? I say, where the hell Tifa been <laughs> oh, damn. I'm like, she used to have my my days lit. Like, what the f That's love. So, yeah, it, it was good to, you know, it was definitely good to see that that spotlight on you, man. And I mean, are you still teaching to this day, right? I am. I teach at, uh, what should I say, my school? I teach at, yeah, I teach at High Park. You probably bring some more uh, enrollment through. Well, that'd be dope. <laughs> I teach at High Park right now. Um, what do you teach? Broadcast technology. Oh, oh I love that, that for you. I love that for you. <laughs> some of my students, uh, Saw the doc and then her uh, Kendra shout me out on the air and came in the school like, hold on, wait a minute, <laughs> <laughs> you, I'm a you big didn't deal. tell me all that. I'll be like, what? Look, look, look. I'm, 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 I'm a big deal. Your teacher's a big deal. I'm big. 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 I'm what okay. Miss Tifa? You what? say 30 seconds, <laughs> 60 seconds. Right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the kids don't be audition. Right. Pro tool. Okay. You okay. How far from the mic, teacher? Oh. <laughs> no, for real. Oh, That's real, though. Dale. Hey, this, that boy fool. Um, yeah, but, he, um, he hilarious. Hey. All y'all amazing energy, though. I love it. I hey. get why y'all doing so well and why people want to come up here and share their talent because the spaces, it feels good. Do not man, it makes feel us feel good. You know what? We, 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 a little whip, lip yeah, color. I know, right? You, you, gonna, you, you saying that. You know, no, really, that hit different. Hey, that's important, though. That hit different. That's Damn important. Damn. I know a lot of, I, I've walked in the rooms and I know artists have told me about coming in the room and they just like sit there and wait for the questions because it's just, it's awkward. Mm -hmm. It can be weird, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Damn, T, that that really just hit different. Yeah. You a legend in this, and hearing it from you Thank know you. from the goat's mouth, that that hit real different, man. For um, sure. Thank you. We got to talk about album before okay. we end things off, Tifa. Uh, okay. I know you in the studio working. 
I am. Uh, like I said, we, we see you in the studio uh, on your IG. You put up clips here and there. Yeah, what is sprinkle. What's the title of the album? Because you dropped two singles so far in 2021. What's the title? I did. I don't know yet. And the thing is, those probably won't even be on there. Wow. Yeah. Get the... F oh, you got something in the stash. Ooh. That's Ooh. how you know the album's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't... I don't know yet. Um, you know, you play around with ideas, but honestly, nothing sticks to me. For a long time, like, I'm the type of artist where I, when I think about music and I think about myself, like, where I am personally, and I'll be like, fuck, what does that sound like? You know, what does an album for me sound like right now? What type of beats are those? What type of production is that? You know, what's the vibe? Like, what's the whole content? Like, I, those was singles that I did that I thought were dope and I just dropped. So for me, my album um, is going to be a whole body of work. It's going to be a whole mood. Mm -hmm. Like I used to feel like back in the day, like when we did the Infamous joint, and even when I did my Grown Ass Woman album, I felt like, oh, you need every type of song on the project to show versatility. I totally disagree with that now. You know, um, now I feel like it's really all about zoning in on one mood, uh, one zone, one piece of content, one message that you really want to drill and drive home to people. And, you know, that's what I've been really just crafting. What's the mood? What's that mood? Man, I think it's about uh, the mood and the zone is just the peace and comfort of self-confidence. Just know who you are. You know, I don't have a cool colloquialism to say that shit yet, but that's really where I'm at. And that's what has been coming out of the pen. You got to let people know how they can get in <coughs> tune with you. Uh, of course, how they can follow you. Yeah. Uh, if Is there any ways that is like the school taking donations or anything for the program? Yes, you can actually, yeah. yeah let people know. Absolutely. Um, I would say hit me on my IG and I will connect you with the right people for that particular thing to donate to the uh, broadcast program. And we have a, just to say, so quick plug for High Park. Um, and then it's multiple schools throughout mm -hmm. CPS that have this program people don't know about. So your child can go to school, learn broadcast technology or digital media. So like graphic design, animation, right? And then they graduate with a certification in Adobe. With that certification in Adobe, you can earn up to $35 an hour after high school. I'm trying to go back to school, shit. A lot of kids are not going to college, right? But the difference between them earning $35 an hour for something they enjoy doing versus going to work at Mickey D's, my bad, for like $12 an hour, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's night and day. That changes communities. Yes. So that's my passion, you know, for that. I've always trained and... Uh, mentor people at the different stations I worked at. So when I was asked to teach, I was like, it might be dope. They might fuck with me. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. And I was like, you sure? I don't really talk like teachers talk. But, you know, <laughs> it's, it's been a blessing. It's been a good fit. But there are multiple schools that have that program. Ours at High Park, we definitely certify students. And, you know, we just dope. You know, we're trying to make amazing things happen in the black and brown community. I hear that. Now, how, now, how can people continue to follow you on your <clears throat> your amazing journey? Um, right now, at Infamous Tifa on IG. Um, I'm Infamous Tifa on uh, face, Facebook, too. I don't have a TikTok. Do you have a I don't, You know what? I got a TikTok, but I don't use it. My daughter be lightweight on there doing the dances and all that stuff. <laughs> I do have a Twitter. It's Infamous Tifa as well. So it's Infamous underscore Tifa. Right, infamous for infamous syndicate, Tifa, moi. Man, yo, this was a dope ass day today. Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. Women's History Month is this is one for the books, y'all. Okay. Man, I appreciate y'all. Thank you for sliding as always. You you didn't have to come, but you took time out, share some amazing stories. I appreciate y'all. Mm. Hey, that's you know that's what God wants us to do. Share, and share, you share love, your testimony. Man. Share your story. You know, we learn like that. I learned a lot from people sharing stuff with me along the way. Sometimes it'd be like the awkward stories where you'd be like, damn, I never thought about stuff like that. You know, <laughs> be those little gems mm -hmm. and change your thinking or grow it. Change your life. Yeah. <laughs> On Facts. the real.